Alright, so uh, this is a tutorial about making a DVD, a SD DVD, and uh, using going from Premiere to Encore. So, we're starting out here in Premiere, and first you have uh, your timeline. Uh, once you create your timeline and get it all how you want it, all fixed up, you want to go ahead and export that. And you will do that by hitting Control M as in Mary, and that'll bring up your export settings. So here you want to uh, create a MPEG-2 DVD, and then you choose your output name and the location where you want to save it. And from there. Bump our quality up to 100. Uh, make sure your frame rate is, it matches what your sequence is, and in this case, it's 29.97. Uh, and the aspect ratio is 4 by 3 because, again, this is a SD. Um, go ahead and choose use previews, and then we want to queue it. So, once we queue it, Adobe Media Encoder will open if it's not already open. Um, and you see it'll be here and it'll uh, be ready to go just let's hit the green button to start the queue and I'm gonna skip through because I've already done this so once it's done uh, this is this same sequence right here uh, you can quick click on it and open up the file location so it's gonna give you two files and in this case, it's 846ES.m2v and 846ES.wave. So you want to select those two, and you can do so by holding down the control key. And select both of them. So then you want to uh, open up uh, Adobe Encore. And let's close this and let's. Let's start from scratch here. So, so we're going to open up Adobe Encore. Okay, so from here, we're going to create a new project, and <clears throat> that was 846ES, so you can name it, you know, whatever you want, um, just for my own sake, I like to put ENC for Encore behind it, uh, then you want to choose your location where you want to save it. So you do that, it's on DVD, television standard is NTSC for the United States. So let's go ahead and hit OK. And then from there, we will then drag our two uh, assets into the project. So you just drag and drop. And you see that they will uh, transcode here. Just give it a couple of minutes for it to do that. Okay, so once it's finished transcoding, you will see that it's no longer italicized. Uh, so the next thing we want to do is create a menu. Um, so we can come over here to our library. And let's choose a blank menu. You can just double click and it'll import a blank menu here. And so now we have to actually create this menu. So let's put our 
safe lines on here so we can keep track of that. Um, and also what we'll do, right click on the menu and let's edit the menu in Photoshop. So let's click on that and wait for Photoshop to open. So once that opens, we'll get this message here, and we can just click OK. So now we just have a blank, uh, blank canvas here. So uh, what we will do is create a menu, and this can be anything you want. You could take a screenshot from your actual timeline if you want. Um, and save that picture if you so desire. You can, you know, choose whatever you like. So in this case, I'm just going to grab uh, a little background file and throw it in there real quick. Something simple and quick. Uh, let's go with a blue. So I will just let's copy. Uh, just drag and drop. Let's drag this over and put this in. fast and dirty here so um, then you just create your title whatever you want uh, your menu to look like so I'll just put a 46 ES um, and put the person that's speaking and you know this can be in type of pictures or anything and then of course we need to create a button for play okay. so right here I'll just let's play so let's get rid of this so now um, this is going to be our play button that the person actually clicks on so what we need to do for this to make it activated as a button is come over here to our layers palette and let's create a new folder so I'm going to change the name of this to and this has to be very specific so it's going to be uh, parentheses plus sign and parentheses okay so then um, I'm sorry parentheses and then and you can call it we can call it button you can call it whatever you like so I'm just going to call it button and go from there um, so now let's grab our uh, rectangle tool here Let's create a nice little square to go over that play button. And of course, you can't see that. So, let's, uh, we can change the color also. So, I need something probably like a yellow or something like that so that we can see it. Nice little yellow there, and so we can see our actual play. Let's turn the opacity down and just to something you like right there. 31% is good for this. 
Um, then what we're going to do is we're going to create a another layer. We're going to name rename this layer. Rename this layer parentheses equals one and close the parentheses. And then we're going to turn this layer off. Okay. So now we are done with that. So we can close this. Say yes. Yes, we want to save it. Say yes. I'll say okay. Now let's go back to Adobe Encore. And boom, here is our uh, menu. And everything is nice and with inside the uh, safe lines. So we don't see the button that we just created. So in order to do that, we'll click this button right here, show selected uh, subscription highlight. And we turn that on, and there is our button. So if we want to save this button, we can come over to our layers, and we can just take it. And you know, if you click on it, you see you can resize it to fit just exactly what you want. So what we do is just take this and drag it up to our library. I'm sorry. Let's drag this to our library for buttons. Drag it over and. This is a yellow button, I guess, so we can just call it yellow. Hit enter, and now we can use that at any time. So that's been added to our library. So next thing we want to do is create our timeline. So here, let's click on the M2V file and the WAV file. You can hold down the shift key. Click the first one, hold down the shift Shift key, go to the second one, and it'll select both. And then let's right click, new timeline. Click that, and it'll put both um, the video and the audio on the timeline together. So now we want to now link uh, our actions. So if you look here you'll see the little mar a little marker there um, and if you've made markers in Premiere you kind of know what that looks like so you see that marker there so we want to take that marker and drag it up to play okay then Let's click in our timeline palette and we see how this changes over here. So now we want to map our end action. So the end action, when the video finishes, we want it to go back to the menu. So from here, we'll pick whip this down to play. And you see that connects it. So also, our menu, we want to make sure that the menu is the very first thing that people see when they put the disc in. So Want to right click on it and well it's already set at first play and that's seen by the little circle there so if, if we wanted the DVD to just play when we first put it in we would come here and set the first play and now you see the little circle on the timeline so let's switch this back because we want the menu to play first so now, we're basically ready to make our DVD. So what we do first, before we do that, we want to make sure everything is okay, make sure there are no orphan timelines, uh, and make sure everything checks out. So we hit check project, then go to start, and no items found. So that means everything is good, so our DVD should play with no problem. So the next thing you want to do is also create a title and 
you can put, you know, whatever you want to title the DVD. Uh, I can put A46 ES. Um, you can put the date there, whatever the date is, and whatever information you would like to put. You hit enter, and the number of copies you would want to make. At this point, I just want to make one. And next thing you do, you hit build, and it will actually, at this point, begin to build your DVD. And once it's done, it will pop out, and you are good to go. So in a nutshell, that's... Uh, how you make a DVD going between, or one way you can make a DVD, Arthur DVD going between Premiere Pro and Encore using Photoshop as well. Thank you very much.